Hello and welcome to E-Magazine. I'm your host, Brenda Nyamichaba. Now today, E-Magazine, we have a special guest who has many hearts from being um, a blogger, from being a creative consultant. But today, out of our many hearts, we're going to focus on one of them that's going to help us talk about our topic of what it takes to be an event manager and planner in Kenya today. Welcome to E-Magazine today, Thank you. Diane. Thank you. Thank, um, you, thank so you so much, much for joining me. You're welcome. So how are you doing? I'm good. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so tired. I, I can imagine it's a Friday, uh, so don't worry. Yeah, it's a Friday. So I I just want to jump right into and just start talking about you know trying to understand what event planning and managing yeah. is all about yeah yeah because okay, so basically um, event planning and management is literally everything that goes into from mm -hmm. the start to finish of doing an event so it's literally from looking for sponsors if you're you know, of course doing an event looking for sponsors mm -hmm. um looking for location looking for um suppliers looking for vendors of course if it's an event that requires vendors um, yeah, it's ma the marketing behind it, it's literally everything. So the event planning, I would say, is just per se the actual organizing, mm -hmm. but the management comes now for things like marketing, you know, other things that now go in side by side with the event. Okay, wow, that sounds uh, a lot, like it, a lot. It is, <laughs> so it is why did you lot. decide to get into event planning? It's so crazy. Um, when I was working at um, a call center, like after I left GSIU, mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know, I, I, would, be, I was like part of the, uh, the fund committee. So I was on planning like the Christmas parties and, you know, just the fun stuff. And then it hit me, wait, should I work, be at a call center or should I start mm -hmm. my own thing? Mm -hmm. So uh, after some time, I quit my job. Funny enough, I hadn't decided I was going to go into events yet until 2016 and I quit my job in 2015. Mm -hmm. So I started doing creative consultancy and then later I was like, wait, but I loved planning. I love, because I used to always plan, okay, it wasn't exactly events, but it was like trips with mm -hmm. my friends for my, bir on my birthdays. Which is part of planning. Which is part of planning. Yeah. So, you know, it goes hand in hand. So I planned my 21st birthday to Mombasa, blah, 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 you know, and, and I was like, wait, I actually love doing this. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, then 2016 came. That's amazing. And, yeah. That's amazing, because not everyone has that skill of planning. Uh, me, I, I <laughs> really, that's something I cannot even do. So tell me more about um, your company, Hot Mode Africa, and what um, what kind of idea went into that and okay. how you first started it. Okay, fine. So in 2016, I met up with my partner, my, my former partner but still a partner um and uh i was like you know i was like you know i need to come up i want to do something different mm -hmm. so we came up with one idea and then she was like no 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 actually let's let's go big or go home mm -hmm. that's when of course paint the run came about and then of course from that hot mode now africa came about so for us it was more about planning things that planning events that are different not the norm of like what we see in terms of like concerts or um or you know just really chill events but okay. more but more events with a touch a different touch and i feel like I, we got inspiration a lot from abroad. Okay. Yeah. So it's like you know, what can we do here that's not really being done yet and it hasn't really been exploited yet? Okay. And that's how, of course, now you literally just answered the question. Where I was just going <laughs> to ask you, what's the agenda of Hot to Moon to Africa? <laughs> um, right just tell it. me about some of the events you've actually planned okay. um, throughout your company, and you know, would you consider them being very successful? Um, yeah, so basically, so now um, Paint the Run came about mm -hmm. under Hot Mond. Paint the Run is a 5km Holy Run and festival, right? So that's one event that we've planned since 2016. Plus, I planned 2016, mm -hmm. did our first one in 2017. And then we did, we worked with Safaricom, did their, worked with them doing their annual sports day, okay. and did for them a Holy Run. Wow. So, yeah, in terms of that. And of course, now in terms of like those are the big, big events that we've really done. In terms of like minor small events, we've done like baby showers, you know, the, the typical. Okay. But yeah, but for us, it's more that's how we, we're in that, that's the line that we're going into. Okay. So more corporate, but still, you know, fun. Fun at the same yeah. time. Yeah. That sounds very exciting. Now, I just want you to tell me what are some of the challenges you face when you're coming into this market? Because I know for a fact, you know, the event planning um, and marketing Kenya is very yeah. competitive. As much as there are different issues for it, it is hard to get yeah. into it. So what are those challenges you face and how were you able to overcome them? Um, I think f the biggest thing I faced was bringing a new idea mm -hmm. into like the Kenyan market. So of course, this idea, like for example, the paint around works abroad. You know, there's color on okay. UK, color on US. Yes. But then bring it here, even getting sponsors on board, they're like, um, what is this? Yeah, they like, don't understand. They don't. Understand the it. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. And even like the young people, of course, like in USAU, they have the uh, Holy the Culture Week and they have the Holy yes. Experience yes. thing they do, that they do. And so, of course, people kind of knew about it, but it wasn't like really known. So I think the biggest challenge we faced was 
telling guys, okay, fine, come for a different experience. Let's not go for the typical type of events that we go for. Come for hours, you know. Mm -hmm. That, to me, was the biggest. And, of course, and the is funding. this still something that's um, affecting, you know, you trying to get your events out there? Um, I think it's become better because mm -hmm. it's like the third year and I feel like people are more open to like, this type of events and of course they've done their research. People, there's a lot of people, you know, even like checking on YouTube and Instagram, they can see other events coming up, coming about. Mm -hmm. So people are, know, are more now acquainted with like the Holi Festival abroad that happens like in India. So it's a bit easier okay. to push on now when it comes to our events because our events are more directed in that like type of like area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's become better but it's still growing. That's great. Yeah. Now, would you say that kind of market, uh, when it comes to event planning, is you know making a lot of money in Kenya right now? From I your experience. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you do it right, yes, it is. Um, event planning is something that we all need. From like literally, even someone planning your graduation party or your baby shower, it's literally with us every day. So um, I think if you do it right and you know who to approach and you know who to work with, and of course, if you organize in the, in the best way you can, um, then yeah, mm -hmm. then definitely there is money behind it a lot, yeah. Okay, wow. Now, what would you say is the most tedious thing about planning an event? Well, everything. <laughs> <laughs> everything. a specific thing you do not look forward to when you're planning a certain event. Yeah, approaching sponsors. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. it's very difficult. Have, yeah, the thing is, you have to know how to take, like, take a step back because you can't call them too much. And you're like, okay, they'll, they'll tell you, yeah, yeah, give me one week. You call them in a week, they're like, give me two weeks. Okay, no, give me one month. And you call them in a month, they're like, no, give me... So you're like, okay, fine. Wow. Are you giving me it the answer? It is that difficult. It is. It I, you is. know, I don't think a lot of people think about what goes behind, you know, planning an event. We just want to attend yeah. it and, you know, have the food yeah. that's there since we've bought tickets. <laughs> but knowing that it's such a process actually just brings a whole yeah. new light for it. Now, um, another thing I just want to look at is, you know, when you started your company, um, what are some of the investments you find yourself putting into your company in order for it to be, you know, what it is right now? And then later on, I just want to get into, in terms of when you're planning an event, mm. from, you know, budgeting, from, from, from putting all those things into it, how yeah. do you make sure you get money out of that? Okay. Like how do you monetize it? How do you monitor it? Okay, yes. so basically, the different avenues, for, I'll give examples of like my event, the mm -hmm. different avenues you can make money. So, of course, there's the ticketing. There's vendors, having vendors at your event. And okay. of course, even have merchandise. You can also sell merchandise. So it's just knowing about the different avenues that you can use in order for you to get money back. Mm -hmm. And that way, if you'd also do that, and then of course now, properly planning. So you can say, okay, fine. So I want my event to happen in July, for example, or as mine is happening. And you start planning like six months or to a year early. Mm -hmm. And then you start putting everything. Of course, every small things that you, every small, Every small place where money goes in, you need to always account for it. Because I think sometimes what happens is that you can forget, like, oh, you know, I've just put petrol and you're going for a meeting, but that's still money mm -hmm. that's coming out of the business for you to go do something related to the, business, to, you know, to the event. So I think accounting for everything is very, very important when okay. it comes to event planning. And, and how, how were you able to come to the conclusion of you know, your, your packages or your pricing when, for example, a client comes, up, comes um, approaches you and tells you the certain thing I want you to do for me in terms of planning? What, what kind of packages do you offer? In case I want to, in case you for you to, to plan my event. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now of course it depends on the type of event um, uh -huh. that you want planned. So of course if it's like a corporate event, I would not price the same with an individual. You know that def that's of, uh, definite, of course. Um, so of course we price by the things that our client wants us to do. Some clients just say I just want um, you guys to get from your location and the decor. Some clients say I want everything. I want you guys to do the marketing. I want this and this and that. Some clients just say like this is a Firecom event. Mm -hmm. Just come and do for us like the Holy Run. So now we'll plan for that. So of course, what we, what we look at is what exactly we're getting into, like what exactly we're doing for the client, and then we can now price it according to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, I'm learning so much, Diane. <laughs> but we're going to take a short commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to delve deeper into this conversation of what it takes to be an event manager and planner in Kenya. So don't go anywhere, you're watching your magazine.